In this section, we will talk about inhibition of enzyme action. We can include these inhibitors or these chemicals which inhibit the enzyme action as a factor also along with substrate concentration, temperature and pH. But we uh, normally talk about these inhibitors under a separate category and that is why we are taking this inhibition in a, as a separate part. There are three ways in which this enzyme action can get inhibited. The first one is known as competitive inhibition. Here there is a competition between the substrate molecule and the inhibitor or we can say the inhibitor competes with the substrate molecule to bind with the active site. Let us draw this enzyme and these slots which we are making these are supposedly the active sites and this is our substrate molecule which can fit or attach to this active site and this is our inhibitor. So this is the inhibitor substance. Both these can fit into these active sites. So now what is going to happen when these two things are available? At approximately 50% site, substrate is going to bind. That means 50% substrate uh, enzyme complex will be formed and 50% approximately is going to be enzyme inhibitor complex form. 50% site substrate is going to bind, 50% site the inhibitor is going to bind. Enzyme substrate complex is a temporary complex and when we say a temporary complex it's going to dissociate to give the product and the enzyme will be set free. That means these 50% sites will again be available for new substrate to bind with. Whereas the enzyme inhibitor complex is a permanent complex. That means those 50% sites are permanently blocked. So 50% sites are now blocked. So product formation has reduced by 50%. If we go one step beyond this, now only 50% active sites are available. Out of the remaining substrates and inhibitors, the remaining 50% site, again, 50% of that remaining substrate is going to bind and 50% of the remaining, that is, inhibitor is going to bind, say 25%. So 25% substrate will bind, 25% uh, inhibitor would bind. And again, those 25% site would be blocked by the inhibitor permanently. So product formation will go by or go down by 25%. So first step, 50%, then 50 of that one, then 50 of that one. Slowly, the product which is formed, its concentration will go on decreasing. Or in other words, the enzymatic action is decreasing. And why did we use the word competitive here? Because the inhibitor and the substrate, they compete. Or inhibitor competes with the substrate to bind with the active site. There are two examples which we normally talk of whenever we use this competitive inhibition. One is a normal reaction. Let us talk about the normal reaction and then we'll add the inhibitor. Succinate changes into fumarate and the enzyme is succinate dehydrogenase. If this is the normal reaction then all the active sites of this enzyme they would be occupied by succinate but here malonate acts as the inhibitor. So if malonate is added, then 50% sites of this enzyme would be occupied by malonate and approximately 50% by succinate. 
So how much of the product of fumarate would be formed? In first step, it's going to go down by 50% approximately. And then again, less, less and ultimately very less fumarate would be synthesized. The second example, which can also be taken as an application of this competitive inhibition is use of sulfur drugs in treatment of bacterial infection. Normal reaction again, para-amino-benzoic acid is converted into folic acid by bacteria and this folic acid is required for normal growth and reproduction of bacteria. So they convert this para-aminobenzoic acid which is acting as a raw material for synthesis of folic acid. And when this folic acid is synthesized, they are able to grow and reproduce in our body. The enzyme is folic acid synthetase. When we have to treat this bacterial infection, we take sulfur drugs. Sulfur drugs are competitive inhibitors. That means they are going to compete with PABA to bind with folic acid uh, synthetase. Folic acid synthetase. 50% places sulfur drug is going to bind. 50% places paraminobenzoic acid is going to bind. That means folic acid synthesis will fall suddenly by 50% and then by 25% and then again. So the amount of folic acid synthesized would go on decreasing. When very less folic acid is available, that means the bacteria will not be able to grow and reproduce in our body. Or in other words, by using these sulfur drugs, we are able to treat this infection because if their bacteria are not able to reproduce, we are uh, getting rid of those bacteria. And that is why many a times doctors prescribe us a dosage. They ask us to take a particular kind of drug for say three days or five days uh, of that. There is a period for which they want us to take that medicine. First dose or first couple of doses when we take, we suddenly get 50% relief. And as soon as we get 50% relief, we think that the infection is gone. But what has happened is when we take this medicine, the, this sub, uh, product formation, folic acid synthesis, for example, has gone down by 50%. So 50% bacteria are not able to reproduce or they die. So infection has gone down by 50%. And because we have 50% relief now, we stop taking the medicine. But folic acid is synthesized, though in less concentration. So with that less available folic acid, those remaining bacteria, they start to grow and reproduce. And again, after two, three days, that infection resurfaces. And that is why we should complete the dosage of the drug or the medicine which is given to us for treatment of a particular disease. This type of inhibition is reversible. So this is very important thing. Competitive inhibition is a reversible mechanism. Is a reversible mechanism. And how can it be reversed? It can be reversed by increasing, by increasing substrate concentration. That means if these are the situations or these are the two reactions and if we increase substrate concentration by many folds, we were taking probability by this, that 50% would be substrate binding, 50% would be inhibitor binding but if substrate concentration is much much higher than the inhibitor then most of the places it is going to be the substrate which is going to bind at the same time if substrate concentration is more then the inhibitor is dislodged from that site and again that active site is occupied by the substrate so this is very important that Competitive 
inhibition is a reversible mechanism but it can be reversed only when the substrate concentration is increased. This is one way of inhibition which we call competitive because the inhibitor is competing with the substrate. Next one is non-competitive inhibition.